This is the sandbox. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Podcast. Uh, we got some special guests in here today. Uh, we got some familiar faces. Uh, main man could not be here today. He um, unfortunately got in a car crash. But he's doing, he's super good. He's he's great. He's nothing wrong with me. Just a little sore. So, shout out to him. Prayers up to him. Uh, but we got one of my uh, high school buddies. Two of my high school buddies, but special high school buddy. No offense to you, Ring. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You got, uh, you got Malik Joe twin. in here. What's up, man? What's up, bro? It's your boy, the dickhead, the dickhead of all times. You already know what's up. Fuck is you talking about? I'm in this joint. Yeah, appreciate you coming through, bro. Of course, you already know. Shit, litty, shit, titty is up right now. Yeah, I hold you. Fly you can fly, fucking just I'm 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 after it. I'm at all times. I'm on top of shit. You ready for uh, eight o'clock? I'm ready for eight for sure. I'm got ready. A, I, I got, got the Cowboys, right? What? Uh, cool, who man. you got? You got the Giants, man. You got the Giants? What, what, who are you? What's your what's your team? Yeah, the Colts. Oh, you're a Colts. I ain't been watching football all year, so forgive me. Mm, damn, yeah. it's unfortunate. What's up, Rain? <laughs> what's up, Brody? You got talking to Mike, bro. What's up, bro? I'm sorry. Come on, yell it. You don't know, dog. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on, man. You know you done. You done TV you before. Cool. Remember you? You like my stunt double. Remember that time you had to do the John for the stunt double shit. No, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to Mike, Reed. My fault. My get a little closer. Get up on it. Get up on get it. Up on it. <laughs> get some of that peach fuzz. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> this nigga too cool. Reed, I'm too cool for this motherfucker. Oh, like, man. What are you talking about? Money, what's up, bro? Yo, yo, what's up with y'all? How y'all feeling? I'm chilling, dog. Right, yeah, yeah. I ain't know. Ain't been here in a minute. It's the live show. For real. Yeah, it's just a live show. Y'all rec- oh yeah, cause y'all got y'all got equipment yeah, here and shit. It's just a live show. Okay, in a while. Shit. Yeah, long time. It's kind of nostalgic coming here. Yeah, missed it. Yeah. I was here like last week and shit. Little man, <laughs> hey, you stay up this joint, look. Oh yeah, I was had a, I had another podcast up here like last week. It did like a couple months before that. So oh, sure. you know, this is this is becoming a familiar sight for me. Okay, yeah. working. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely on top of shit. Stay consistent. Yeah, how was your week, bro? Uh, it was cool. Just the usual shit worked. Gym. Got some ink done. Oh, yeah. Fell back, spent some money, went out to eat. Okay. Regular shit? Yeah, it's a uh, restaurant week. So I went to um Devon's. Oh, Devon's Seafood? That shit. Yeah, be it was actually, it was popping. Yeah. Had a good steak. Devon's Seafood, we slapped. Yeah. Devon's, that's the joint on Bourne Street, right? No, oh. it's a uh, rent house. Rent house. Rent house, yeah. Downtown. I ain't been there. I think I've been there. I'm not like sure. Is you from Delco, nigga? We <laughs> from there, bro. Shit. I got like a handful of wrestlers I go to regularly. But that was a good out job. At all. He Devin said y'all playing the Cowboys this week. What's going on? They don't know what the hell happened. I have not watched. A f- yeah. I probably watched probably a game and a half, maybe. Damn. All season. How you doing, brother? I'm a Coast fan, bro. They, I guess yeah. You can't. See what I'm saying? Like they that. just put me out of it. Uh, I'd rather just play Madden then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can create your team better than I was about to say create a player yeah, right. <laughs> and kill everybody. Yeah, you, you remember you used to create a player that should be 99 anything thing and they be husky as shit oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll do anything shit. on 99 fast seven, shit seven strong foot, as shit right. Right. 7 foot 400 <laughs> seven, right. 400 pounds 7 foot 5 as run a full flat <laughs> <laughs> full <laughs> flat as a quarterback he fucking nasty he doing yeah. spin moves hurling the niggas and all that play all positions I put that nigga on defense crazy kicking turns <laughs> Seven two four hundred pounds coming out on a full flat. You clean it, everybody. <laughs> Cartwheeling niggas. Oh shit! How was your week, Green? Cool, cool. Chilling. Just yeah. work. Same old same. Yeah. How was your New Year's? I knew it was a little fifty fifty. Yeah. Some situation happened at the crib. Dang. Okay. Too, but other than that, it was cool. I brought the New Year's in in a good way. Yeah. You was drunk. Of course. Yeah. I was Henny. fucked up. Bring a nasty ass hen dog. You know. You don't, you don't fuck with the hen dog. I'm right a douche guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's better than Deuce. I'm sorry. I, mean, I think they both cognacs. Yeah, they are. But <laughs> family. I, huh. fuck, I fucks with uh, Espelon. I drink tequila. That's, oh, that's a Harry John. Yeah, I Espelon. Tequila. What is yeah. Espelon? That's a cool It's because I can't fuck with Henny no more. I drank Henny so much growing up. Before I was supposed to be drinking the shit, I can't even touch the shit no more. I, like, every time I smell Henny, I'm like, damn, man. Everybody say that. It fucked my whole man, bro. I, we was I'm drinking. Still on the Henny. 
we was drinking though back then. Like you got, we was really drinking henny. Like we was twelve, <laughs> like twelve drinking henny. Just crazy. drinking henny. Yeah. Like what are we doing? <laughs> wow. We gonna get to it. But how was your week, man? How was your New Year's? Uh, my New Year's was lit. I was at work. Um, we watched the ball drop. Okay, that shit was fire. It was lit. Um, I was drunk as shit. It was, it was definitely popping. Yeah. Week's been dope, man. My whole life is trying to turn around the last two weeks. I'm pretty sure we're going to get into it at some point. But uh, my week's been crazy, man. Podcast after podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. Showcase after showcase. Video drop after video drop. So yeah, it's been it's been lit right now. Yeah, it's lit. I, yeah, it's lit. My analytics on fire right now. Yeah, I mean, this is what you work for, so. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The yeah. logistics. All right. But, yeah. I mean, since we on topic, I mean, we can get into your story. Okay. Start from the beginning, then. Everything up leading to now, so like we we talking like young ball shit. Yeah, young ball nice shit. Right. I went, oh, the, I went shit. yeah, I went the whole scoop. All right, so I'm gonna give y'all like you know some kind kind of a you know a short version of it, but long version at the same time. So yeah. I'm from North. Um, grew up in North. Uh-huh. Grew up in uh in Northeast. At first, I was in Northeast until like fourth grade, and then like I was still kind of in Nice Town though, like you know going back and forth and shit. And then I started playing football for the uh, Nice Town Steelers. Yeah. Shout out to uh, the, the the Markeith twins too, Markeith and uh, the Morris twins, because they used to play for the <laughs> Nice Town Steelers with us. You played at the same time? Yeah, they played on a higher pound than me because they was they was already tall and shit. So like, they, okay. yeah, they played on like the one forty fives, and I was like on the, like the, the ninety fives. Yeah. But we used to all walk up there together and shit. Like shout out to them dudes, man. They they actually made that shit and anything, even though it wasn't football, but they still made that shit up. Uh, not to cut um, you off, but to cut you off. Yeah, but for either. for the people that's listening, when you hear Nice Town, yeah. It's not. It's the. It's the yeah, total complete. opposite. It's, it's not. nothing like the name. Yeah, like we get. We literally got banners in Nice Town that say "Put the nice back in the." <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad job. It's a definitely yeah. a bad. It's one of those like yeah, like ironically, it's just a badass. Place. Yeah, come on, man, um, leave my neighborhood alone. Yeah, no, it's just facts. <laughs> we seen some shit. Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, so you know, football was like a big thing in my life at the time, but the Steelers was trash. I ain't gonna hold you. We folded in anything. Mm. We only won like one game in like three seasons, so it was like we was trash. Damn, for real. Yeah, we was trash. Shit. It was just like bad coaching. Like really motherfuckers just getting in when they want to get there. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was a bad job. So super unorganized. Super unorganized. Motherfuckers like, yeah, I coach this day. I coach well, sometimes I came to practice, we ain't had no coach. We was just running run laps and then that was it. That was the whole practice to run laps and then motherfuckers go home. Oh wow. Like, yeah, we ain't play practice, no plays. We probably had like two plays. It was a bad job. Then I went and started playing for the Aztecs, and that's when shit went when shit started going crazy. Cause you know, the Aztecs was like the, the team to beat them and like the Chargers. Okay. And shit started getting real busy. So like I started really like playing football like real dead ass taking it serious. And um, you know, I was heavy into football. If you know, you remember me from high school and shit. Yeah. And so then, where did the love for football come from? Uh I would say Brian Dawkins. Cause like I it was like I'm I was like just like any kid, they're very like, you know, they grab onto an idol and like, you know, kinda idolize those people. And like, you know, for me it was Mike Tyson and uh Brian Dawkins also Shawn Michaels. Okay. And, um so like I was like always around the realm of like doing something like physical of that nature, and mm-hmm. Brian Dawkins is just the the inspiration and passion that he got because like I'm a passionate person. You played football with me before, you know. Like I'm yeah. a heavy speech ball, heavy like you know. Mm-hmm. We got this. We can take this shit over, kind of guy. And um, so like that kind of just resonated with me. So that shit started taking me to another level watching Dawkins play and like wanting to actually like be like that. And I was nah, that's when I was like I got to turn into a dog. And then uh, it came came time around to play high school, and like I was like the first. Freshman on the varsity team, like in a in a long ass time. Really? Yeah, for grats. I remember shout the zip. Shout the zip. Shout the zip. He gave me a chance. <laughs> shout the zip. Damn. Yeah, it was <laughs> lit. And then uh, so I started playing. I started playing as a ninth grader. We, we, I'm playing with like the the big names, like the Jerry Jenkins is the, the fucking Julius Harris is the fucking. Buck Knight, right, rest in peace. Um, these are like names, like if you know these names in Philly, like they they was dogs, like yeah. the Anabizies of the world. They they was the Howl Chambers dogs, mm. and then um, uh, ninth grade came around, I dislocated my shoulder. So I mean, tenth uh, grade came around, I dislocated my shoulder, and I had like a crazy death in my family. Rest in peace, my boy. And then uh, so like I kind of like took that season off, and then I came back eleventh grade, and like I remember shout out to Jason Watson, he was always like, "Yo, you gonna have." In, in high school, it's really hard to have consistently good years. You're going to have a shitty year, you're going to have a good year, you're going to have a shitty year, you're going to have a good year. In my 11th grade year, it was ass. I was ass my 11th grade year. I did some good things, but, like, and then my 12th grade year, I turned it all the way on. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, after that, it was, like, on and popping. 
I started dropping speeches. I started, <laughs> I was always at practice, never missed a day. Like, all, I was on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to, like, West Virginia training camps and shit like that. Like, you know, getting recruits to come see me and shit. Like, that shit was, mm-hmm. like, a different world to me. Like, that was crazy. I mean, it was all I wanted. Like, if I, th- I felt like if I was, like, in Texas or something like that, it would have it would have panned out the way I wanted to. But in Philadelphia, man, sh- yeah, it's hard. That shit would take you the fuck under because we all know niggas that's, like like that when it comes to ball football like these motherfuckers could be in the league but yeah. you know, Philadelphia that shit is hard that shit gonna yeah. take you to fuck under we ain't got no counseling we ain't got no, like I didn't even know when it came to going to college my counselor never told me that I had to fill out an application as a student first before I was a football player so like I'm thinking all these people coming to see me I don't even got to put in no app like all right cool we Gucci right like you know you came to see me we we don't got to do no paperwork right <laughs> and the whole time you still got to enter as a student I had no idea so like when it came to like going to college I was like down to like only like a couple of colleges I can go to because everybody application process kind of shut down. So do you think during like the high school period, like some of the staff that we were under, like wasn't prepared for taking kids to the next level? No, they wasn't. They wasn't. They, you, for sure they wasn't. Like if, in in order for that to happen, well, maybe for the, on the basketball aspect for where we went, maybe a little bit more. But for football, like you would have to be like a freak athlete, like shout out to Earl, uh, Earl Watford. Um, you had to be like a freak athlete, like Earl Wofford. That mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all remember Big Earl? Like, I remember Big Earl. Yeah, like I mean, like he was gonna make it. I don't give a fuck what what campus, wherever he was at. He was yeah. he was a giant. He was a freak athlete. But like for somebody like a me or like you know like the Stanley Baylesses of the world or even the Spencers Moses, shout out to Spence. Yeah, shout out to Spence. Yeah, um, like he was a, like, come on, man, I ain't never seen nobody run the ball like Spence in my life to this That's day. Real. Him yeah. and how I never seen nobody, right. never, ever, never. I'm talking like when I was playing for the Aztecs, bro, we was warming up. He, was, he always played in the pound low to me. When I tell you this man would be in the end zone five times before I stepped on the scale, yeah. like, this shit was insane. Like, something that you never, like, you always, you know, got those people, the Eddie Gaskins of this world. Shout out to Eddie Gaskins. Um, like, that shit was crazy, man. Like, and they just wasn't prepared for that to have, like, dogs like that and, like, also be prepared, like, school wise, like, that, that shit was not in place for us yeah. Like, So yeah That shit kind of I kind of missed on that But I mean I still could have Made it right and everything But I feel like I got it What I, I got what I needed From the sport And it was time to move on To uh, boxing <laughs> And then yeah. I moved on To uh, boxing and Muay Thai Well before we get there So like What were the, some of the Greatest memories you remember From football, the high school period High school football Or just high school period High school football High school football Definitely winning the chip As a senior it Was crazy I ain't got um, my jacket Damn you ain't get your jacket right Nah, I ain't get my jacket. I either. lost my jacket. I well, let's put it in perspective because that chip we won was the first one since the seventies. Eighty-two years. Eighty-two, yeah. Eighty-two years we won that shit. That shit was crazy, yeah. and <laughs> it was crazy. Like we really won that shit, and like my like I take from that season, like damn, like I really like put like a lot of places because like I was like the only nigga really watching film after film room was done. Mm-hmm. Like, Zip was giving me the tape to watch every uh, so like I was on defense putting people right in the right spot. I had Tim out there cleaning shit out there. <laughs> like yeah. Tim Ness did this gap XYZ. Honestly in the chip, I didn't really even do that much because I just was putting people in the right position to be able to, you know, make plays. Yeah. Um but definitely winning the chip was like a big a big joint for me. And then the first I don't know if you guys remember the first game when we played St. Pius when I first dropped the speech that they say to the to this day. The most famous speech. The most famous speech. In Grant's history. Grant's Do you even still remember it? I still remember word from word. You mom dropping it for us? Uh shit. <laughs> <laughs> we practice hard uh-huh. day by day. And as a team, we'll find a way to succeed and march on to be the best. But we can't be alone. We are the dogs. We stand to fight. Whether it's in the day or up under the lights. We go hard, hard to the bone, bang, 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 to the, the whistles, whistles blow. Yo, come up with that. Uh, so I was, I was in the, the crazy. Though, that's a that's a good story. So, crazy part is right. This is back in like you know you watching YouTube hardest hits NFL shit yeah. like that, and you know I'm just listening to Dawkins like, and this is like getting ready for the first game of like the season. Like you know we talk rated like we want to fucking win. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm just listening to that shit. Oh, I'm up all night. It's like three in the fucking morning. Like, I'm just listening to, and then it was this. I think it was Nebraska State, and I watched they like this that they pregame speech, and I'm like. Damn, this shit is fire! I gotta, I gotta come up with something. Like, mm-hmm. I gotta come. I, we gotta come with some heat. And I remember, I practiced that shit. I wrote the whole shit down. I practiced that shit all night, all night. Kept repeating it, kept repeating it, kept repeating. It. I'm like, I'm having them repeat it after me. That shit gonna be lit. It's gonna be on. And then I remember we after we warmed up and like my you got my, my fucking fingers is tingling and everything. I'm like, zip. Like, all right, man, we gotta like you know get the you know everybody ready for the game. He like, milk. You you know you got something for him or whatever X Y Z. And I say the speech and he was like. Enough said. 
and then we fucking <laughs> go out to the field. That shit was crazy, man. That that was that was electric. That was one of like one of my favorite moments. That uh that speech made the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made the news. It didn't make the news that game. It made the news like maybe like the third game, man. We made when we played, we bombed the shit out of prep charter. Yeah. Yeah, that made the news that joint. And that yeah, shit was fire. Yeah, that shit was that's just still on there to this day. Yeah. Um fucking another great moment when we played Del Valle. I know y'all remember that. Hell yeah. Mike Vick was at their <laughs> training camp all week and they was like this. They got this quarterback. He about to be the best quarterback in the world. All this goofy Davis. I remember that shit, bro. Saucing these, bro. We, that was the first time that the Gratz has hit the fire code at a, at a, at a home game. I'm talking, it was like, Pack. and this is like my best game ever. Like, I, I scored a, a 52 yarder rush, John. And I remember when I, when I got to the end zone, I looked up the block called Stop Street. It was people on a roof. Like, oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I'm like, yo, this shit rolling. Then I score again on a, like a, uh, like a, like a 17 yard pass. So it was like, it was like one of them games and like it was just rolling the whole time. The whole, uh, the stands is lit. They, they got fucking Michael Vick back in them and we fucking smashed their ass. That shit yeah. was crazy. Spanked them. Yeah. Spanked them. It was like 48 to 8. Who was the quarterback? Shit. Was it Mott the quarterback at the time? Our quarterback? Yeah, it was, it was Mott. Yeah. Hey, rest in peace, Mott. Rest in peace, Mott for sure. Yeah, it was definitely my mine was our quarterback. I mean, I know I scored twice. I don't know who I, I think. I think I think Madre scored that game. I, think I can't. He did. I, I think, think he did. did. He? It was a wide receiver yeah, score and like uh, stand. Yeah. And that was special because Madre at that time he wasn't really scoring too much. No, I'm pretty sure I know another wide receiver scored. I don't, I don't know exactly. I know Spence scored for sure. Spence scored yeah. every game. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Spence. Right, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. Spence Spence was so special. Right. Oh yeah. We played Roxborough High School. Spence wasn't nowhere to be found. Like nobody knew where he was. Nope. Nigga came at halftime, right? We was I think we was losing that game, wasn't we? We yeah, we was that was a playoff game. Nigga came at halftime, bro. <laughs> put the cleats on and we took the fuck over, bro. Yeah. Like this nigga presence just was felt. Like as soon as he got there, bro, I'm not we joking. turned that shit up on them niggas. He, he is something I never see, bro. He was he was he would come late all the time. And like he really wouldn't get in until the second half and he would still break for hundred every, every like, game. Bro, bro, if he stayed if he was there on time and made the uh, bro, bro. That nigga was different, bro. He was, he was different. Like, <laughs> bro. And was crafty as a motherfucker, right. bro. Like, like he was like he was like shady to me. Like I feel like like the way he like just handled yeah, the ball perfect, and like that's a perfect yeah, yeah, he was like shady and like he could just find an open way and get the fuck open. Like he wasn't even like the biggest, the strongest. He was just na- he was a dog. He was nasty. Yeah. He was nasty, bro. That shit was crazy, man. Shout out to Spence. Shout out to Spence for sure, man. But that senior year was fucking crazy, bro. That shit was lit, man. And yeah. then we lost We lost to Rocks, bro, and Dobbs in the regular season. We beat them both in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. That shit was crazy. Mm. That was our junior year, right? Yeah, that was y'all junior year. Yeah, that was definitely y'all junior yeah. year. Right? The yeah, the year we won the chip was our junior year. That was y'all junior year. Right? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was my senior year. Yeah, I think, I think that was probably the best team, our junior year. Of course. It had to be. We won the chip, yeah. like, bro. We had that. We had a bomb squad. Just imagine if if, if Mott never got hurt. Like that would imagine if Spence would have been on time, and like imagine if we like really Spence been on time, <laughs> right? Imagine and our old line time. was everything. We had Roman, uh, Yanni, and if imagine if they, Yanni, Mill. If they, if they was yeah. dogs though, like we, like if we had a different type of mentality, like not. I mean, we just was kind of lucky that we had like people with that size. But like, if they was like. Like dog, like I'm talking like, like how, locked in, like locked in, like we you know we all watch. Instead of me just watching film, we all watch a film. You know yeah. what I'm saying like we wasn't really locked in, locked in, like like how them t- Texas teams be. Mm-hmm. I mean, we still made it happen. Shout out to it for making it still happen. But if we was man, it would, th- th- there was no team that could beat that team. Yeah, like, no, there was with that size, bro. We had look at the fucking line: Ness, Yanni, yeah. Mill, and fucking Roman. Are you crazy? Yeah. That, that, we bro. had the biggest line in the pub. The no, biggest I, line, bro. No, that I shit was, was crazy. Say, like, that goes back to the. To the to conversation that we was having earlier, like yeah. we had people that really could. Went to oh yeah, they yeah. all could have went. They really all could have went D one to the league. They yeah, all could have yeah, went D one. All could have. Oh, yeah. they was fucking jack. What I'm saying, niggas was a lot not locked in because you know it's Philly. Like it's a lot of shit going on. Motherfuckers still want to look good. Like Roman had a job. Like he was like, I'm trying to get some bitches. Yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> I think had a job. Like, I think too. Um, I don't think a lot of people realize like there is other like opportunities past high school. Yeah, I don't think people had the vision past high school. Of course, well you gotta oh. think like because they ain't seen nobody else do it. So why why the fuck they believe they could? Yeah, you know like they ain't seen nobody else before them do it. Like you know what I'm saying, why would they even think? You know what I'm saying that they could and do it for us? It was a little different too. Like it what was a little slower. Like now, like everything's in front of you. Like everything. Yeah, true, you true, can, true. You true. can definitely. It's accessible now. Go sure. somewhere yeah. nowadays. Like before, you really had to work for it. Like now, yeah, I mean, I, you gotta work for it now. Yeah, but yeah. it's right. literally right in front of you. Yeah. Could you imagine if I had the gram and all that shit? Back then, now I would be, I'd, I'd be in the league right now because, like, you know, I was doing on the YouTube shit. And that shit wasn't really popping yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, 
Cause yeah, YouTube was like fresh at that point. Yeah, that was like I was doing the Malik Joe Road to the NFL shit, and I was dropping everything. Like I was consistent in the motherfucker. Like that shit dropping. Yeah. If nigga, if that shit was the gram nowadays, you got me fucked up. I'd have been. They'd have been put me in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have been threw me in somewhere. You um. Explain scene night because I remember that joint just being real special. Like as far as you go, because you when you came out that tunnel and you came out like Dawkins, you yeah. barking and growling and walking up yeah, the field. Like that, that was that shit was, was crazy to see, bro. Bro, I ain't gonna hold you. Like that shit was lit, and I was like, I the crazy. We don't even had that on film. Like that, I wish we had that on film because that shit was lit. Like yeah, Ness came Rick out. No, no, Rick ain't, ain't get that. No, nope. Rick ain't get that, John. Don't nobody got that. Uh, shout out to Rick. Him. Rick was like uh, shout official, Rick. unofficial cameraman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Rick. Uh, it was we all came out. I, I they, they let me come out last, and I did the whole Dawkins John. That shit was electric, like the John he jumping on the ground yeah. and shit on all fours, bro. That shit was electric. Oh, you it can was, feel that shit in the air, bro. It was crazy. Yeah. Like that shit was so dope, man. That man, that high school football. Man, yeah, it was dope to like it watch it, like just to have like the perspective of the team and just like yeah. watch the top dog on your team just yeah. get ready to take it to the next level, right? So for sure, that shit was amazing, bro. Yeah. Um, so all right. So after high school, you um, what was like the recruiting process like, and then you know getting to Liberty. Uh yeah, that was that, so that was a story amongst the stuff. So so the situation was I was still doing the the Malik Joe Road to the NFL shit right, mm-hmm. and um, I got to Liberty and I made a mistake. I I really didn't read it right because, sorry, Liberty's mm-hmm. like um the biggest Christian university in the world, so. They really thrive on humbleness. Like they really don't resonate with the, what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And but like you know, I wasn't pushing it as cockiness. I was pushing it as it's Malik Joe. Like if the world, like how I am now, the world gonna move out of my way. It's impossible. You can't put a ceiling on me. It's not. I don't give a fuck. What am I doing? You're not putting a ceiling on me because yeah. that's, that's just how I'm wired. So I made a mistake and was like, I did the video, and my uncle on the video was like, Yeah, he gonna put this the school on the map. Which was a bad thing because they was already on the map. Like you know what I'm saying, like it wasn't like I came and like now it's fucking liberty. You know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and that was like a bad job because they they took that as like, oh nigga, we don't need you. You ain't even get recruited. Like you know, like who are you? You yeah. know what I'm saying. So and liberty was D one. Yeah, it's D one double A though. So it's like you know they play that like one one or two big games a year. Like they'll play like mm-hmm. Illinois or they'll play like Nebraska State or something. Okay. like that. And then like they'll go back to like you know East Carolinas and like you know shit like that. But like I mean they way higher up than there now than when I was there. Mm-hmm. So basically, I had to go through the normal process, like and like be a walk on and shit. And somebody found my video through the whole Liberty situation. And after that, I got berated with just like burner account messages, like just like coming at me hard, like in my DM. Like, and this is the first time ever I wasn't the hometown hero. Like you know what I'm saying, like coming from Philly, like everybody yeah. knew, like oh Malik on heat, number. everybody was on yeah, my that's team. Milk. Yeah. That's milk. That's milk. Everybody was on my team. It was like let's go. Mm-hmm. And then I get there and I'm public enemy number one. I did not know how to handle that shit. I was like, what the fuck? Like so now I'm, you know, I'm from Philly, so I'm on automatic rebellion mode now at this point. So they coming at me crazy in the DMs and sliding shit under the door, talking greasy. Like, I'm like, man, fuck mm. everybody. So I'm up there. It's kind of solo, like, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, Briscoe, he ain't want no parts of none of that shit. Like, Briscoe you know also went to grass with us. Yeah, he went to grass. He, yeah. But he ain't really want no parts of, like, that part of – because he was trying to play football too, but, like, that the, the Malik Joe Rolton to the NFL part, and I feel like he was attached to me because he was from Philly too. We both got up there at the same time. Yeah. So I was really on my own, really – like, you know, like, you know, just like out there, I would eat by myself. And like, people, like, I, you know, people were like, when I would come in the room, it's whispers, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, and I'm like, you know, getting my food and I'm on gut, I'm on gully now. I'm me mugging motherfuckers, grilling people, like, fuck y'all. Like, y'all don't want to set me? Cool. I'm going to keep, but I'm going to keep dropping my videos and I'm going to keep being one of the, like, you know, like trying to be the best, basically. And, that shit turned me all the way up. Then I was really dropping shit. I was fucking working out every day, all day. So, they, their team, would come out at 5 a.m. I'll be already out there and I'll be already working out right right next to where they working out doing the same drills they doing like on some movie shit like doing the same shit they doing but outside the gate. Yeah. Just to show you like you going to let me in this door basically. I'm doing the same. I'm going to do the shit every day. I was out there every day before they was out there and I would make sure I was I would leave after they left, you know what I'm saying? And they would just be looking and I probably made it worse because, you know, that's the team I want to be on. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, it's like, you know, and like some, some of the coach, shout out to coach Roberts. He, he saw like the dog in me, like, man, like, listen here. Like I, like, I think he was like trying to get like transfer papers or something like that for me. Like to like get me to a different school or whatever. Cause like, you know, he said, I made a couple like, you know, um, 
meetings at the time mm-hmm. about like you know like what what would it do to bring to the team that I'm on the team and like it's gonna bring the wrong attention and all that goofy shit. So we had a tryout, right? And <clears throat> first time ever we got the tryout. And so now, you know, usually you have a tryout. Nobody's at the stands. Nobody's yeah. there because I'm there. Stands is packed. It's, it's not packed, but it's it's people there. It's people there. I'm talking. There's starters there. Starters that play for the team. Like starters don't go to fucking. Yeah. They don't go to the yeah. fucking. They they don't. They can give two shit. It's starters there. Like yeah. starters there. There's a couple of people like that's that that know. Let's see what this kid could really do. And it was crazy because <laughs> when I was I was playing corner mm-hmm. and I was kind of. Kyle was kind of cheating, but I was playing corner and he was telling it like, cause you know, it's a walk on. Like he, they, they don't, some of the people don't know what a seven is or an eight or a, you know, a comeback or whatever the fuck, like an eight or, you know, you, you right. know, the, the, yeah. the passing tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some of the people, he had to show them the route. Let's see. He was going like this, like on his finger. And I'm like, oh, I see exactly what he about to run. Yeah. So that happened like two times. They run the route. Boom. I cut it off. Interception. First draw. Everybody in the stands. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Reva Allen, here. Reva Allen, shout out to, shout out to Sir Chauncey Holiday because I'm, I'm pretty sure that was him that was screaming at. Um, and uh, yeah, the first John, the second John, do it again. They, he ran at uh, eight, and he did a lazy like fake seven eight, like it was like lazy as shit. So like, I already knew he was running at eight. I'm like, he ain't faking me on this. As soon as I get there, and I get there, I smacked the ball, but I made him fall too when I smacked him. And he was like, yeah, like you know, basically you're not really supposed to be like that kind of physical during uh, the tryout. They not nobody's supposed to hit the ground really. Mm-hmm. So I guess it was kind of the merit, but it really wasn't because I really stopped the play. The bad, the bad John was right. It was this goofy motherfucker too. I'm so mad about this shit. Even though like everything, everything was good. Like I did everything perfect. It was this goofy, linky. Like he had to be like six six white ball, right? He running nine, and I know he running the nine. Nine's a fly. Nine a fly, yeah. And I go to smack the ball. I smack the ball, and the ball just do one of these motions like. Mm. And he catch it. He still recorded it. Damn. He catch it, right? So, you know, now the stands go, oh! <laughs> and I'm just like, come on, stop that, yo. Like, <laughs> sure, that could have happened in the game, but like, he ain't stop it. It yeah. wasn't even, it wasn't like that. That wasn't he, on his own merit. Right. It was, he was a goofy, like, kind of boy. He wasn't even, like, you mean, like that. <laughs> and it was a bad, it looked like a bad job, but like, I, like, I, I look better than, 90% Unless she was like A fucking super strong Motherfucker I would mm-hmm. look better Than all the motherfuckers Out there for Not everybody But like 90% of the motherfuckers yeah. And there niggas In the stands new And if they, you see that You know um, <laughs> And But it was I was already exiled Because of the situ- Like you know The situation yeah. around it So like I basically Tried out for nothing They just wanted to be, Just be there to see If I was actually good I was never gonna make that team It didn't matter What I did So Did you know that Like during the tryout no, like I said, I was hard headed. Like I was, I was doing they. You know what I'm saying, like I'm, I'm thinking that like me doing this, y'all going, y'all going, like, we gotta let him on this team. But yeah. like whole time they thinking that I'm beefing with them. You know what I'm saying? And it mm-hmm. wasn't that. And like, and that wasn't everybody because shout out to Walt Atkins that you know he played for the Dolphins. Shout out to him. He he was always the super supportive. Um, always like like yo, bro, you got that shit. Like it's just an unfortunate situation. Um, Sir Chauncey too, or Holloway. He was he was he he fucks with me. Um. Uh, there was another ball, the the wide receiver ball. He made it to the league too. I forgot his name. And he was cool. He was a, he was the one. He was the main person. He was because he was a captain. I forgot he was tall, black, dark skinned dude. Mm. Um, he he definitely made it to the league. Um, but he was like the captain, captain. And I remember when we first got when we first got to the tryouts, they was like it was a lot of people like from the starting crew talking shit like oh they go the ball in your Xbox. Yeah. And he was like yo we saw the shit when he took one of your spot. And everybody shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. But like this is like this is a message to me just hearing shit. Like that shit was crazy. And then um so I never really actually got to touch the field or actually play for them. And then like I was actually a pretty good student, like when it came to like high school, but like mm-hmm. also I'm at Liberty University now. Like this shit is a of the biggest Christian university in the world. Right. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta take like three Jesus courses. <laughs> three <laughs> wow. three Jesus courses <laughs> from the rip. So it's one I don't have the love of my life, which is football. Yeah. So I don't have that, mm-hmm. and I've never known how to live without it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. like I wasn't doing the best. Like I was like kind of like man, fuck, like I was really a rebellion. Like man, fuck y'all, I'm not doing like now y'all want me to go to church. It was mandatory church Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Dang, oh wow. shit! It was a bad job. Like I mean, no disrespect to people that go there. Like shout mm-hmm. out to y'all. Like good for y'all <laughs> and everything. But like that's just not my world. So it was just a bad job for me. And um. It felt like everybody was out to get me, like everybody. 
And then, like, I started playing intramural football, and then I was still getting messages like, ah, oh, you think you're so good, but you're playing, like, flag football, you fucking loser. You're not even the best person on your flag football team. All this shit. Yeah. And we did have some dogs on that flag football team. Shout out to uh, Tom McRae. Shout out to uh, Rich. Shout out to, uh, shit, I'm, I, damn, I think his name was Will. I think Will. Shout out to him. They was they was all dogs. Like, all could have been in the league. Like, they was all dogs. Not mm-hmm. going to lie. Shout out to Matt Roach. Um, but, yeah, like, Raheem. Yeah, it was a it was it was a crazy situation, man. Mm-hmm. It was it was couldn't I couldn't I couldn't make it. I wasn't gonna make it. Damn, like not even a red search red search situation came of course and none of that. No, like I I, I I had a meeting with uh their I think his name was something Roberts Junior. Um, I had a meeting with their like D backs coach and like you know that's what the position I probably was gonna play. And he was just mm-hmm. like, man, like it ain't looking good. Basically, <laughs> it uh-huh. ain't looking good, man. Like it ain't nothing. I mean, like I came with the wrong energy. I should have just transferred from the rip when I did when that shit happened. But mm-hmm. it was really just wrong place, right idea, mm-hmm. just wrong place. And like you mean, like they just read it wrong. Like it, it, if I could do it all over again, I would still say I would still do the same shit. I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> they just they just read it wrong and yeah. they wasn't used. I guess they wasn't used to something like that. And I also came in a little hot. It could have it could have been deferred, but like that was something I was going to do, and the universe was going to move out of my way regardless of what school I ever went to. And sure, I'm not doing that anymore to this day, but I I, I definitely could have yeah. for sure. Were there any schools looking at you outside of Liberty? Yeah, uh, JMU. Well, um, Earl went. Okay. JMU was looking. Um, I went to West Virginia's uh, training camp. I remember that, and that shit was that shit was lit. But like, that's a different type of realm. Like, I ain't even gonna hold you. Like, mm-hmm. when I got to West Virginia at their camp, <laughs> you know, we in Philly, so I was a linebacker technically down here. Yeah, like we you know, I was playing outside linebacker with me and uh, me and West. Mm-hmm. I get there and they like, yeah, what's uh, what section you going in? And I'm like, shit, I'm looking at the linebacker. These motherfuckers is fucking <laughs> <laughs> all Ray Lewis. Yeah. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, I can't. I, I'm a D back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead to D back. And I remember Steve Smith was there. Not 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 Carolina Smith. Steve Smith, the other Steve Smith, the the, the quarterback bull. Yeah. And uh, Slayton, it was another one that was, I think it was like Slayton, he was good as shit too. I think but one of them went to the Dolphins and he got like concussion and he couldn't play anymore or something like that. Okay. Um, but I remember I was playing, it was me and this one other ball, we kept playing defense, but I was so calm that like I feel like I got overlooked. He was like heavy clapping his hands, like cutting the line and shit. Mm-hmm. And he was locking people down just as much as I was, but I was just doing it calmly. Mm-hmm. like. And like it would like I feel like it got overlooked because he was like he had dreads and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, corner, right? You know how this was corner. This was that corner, yeah. Because like you know that's the everything that's the, everybody want to see when it come down to like them tryouts and like them Jones where you go like you know that's the one on one. Like you know what I'm saying like it was a yeah. big ass crowd. Like I you see like it's just like that big ass crowd around us one on ones. I'm locking motherfuckers up, and he would the other bowl he was locking motherfuckers up, but he was cutting the line. Like he he like I'm going again, and he was just cutting yeah. the line and like. I mean, I was a young boy. I wasn't. I, I wasn't even thinking like to be like be on top of that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uncle was even saying, "Hey, like, man, he cut the line. You cut the line." I just was. I wasn't. It didn't really register to me. So yeah, like that whole situation was like that. You know, I'm West Virginia, some Savannah. I think it was Savannah College. They really, really wanted me, but I was just too big on my own head. I should have, you know, actually like looked into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't regret it because I'm. I'm kind of happy where I'm at right now. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what was life like after like leaving Liberty? Shit, life was bleak. I ain't gonna hold you. When that shit was like, yeah, watching your whole dream just like kind of crumble through your hands. Also, I had a, I had a baby on the way technically, mm. but it was yeah, it turned out not to be mine. Um, so wait, did you finish school or no? No, okay. I went like many years you did two. Okay, yeah. Um, and then I came back home and like the girl that I was dating was having a baby. So I'm like, oh shit. All right, and then you know. You know, the weeks ain't shit ain't it shit wasn't adding up right mm. and then you know everything all came out and spilled so like then then so like it's like I left school for a baby turns out the baby wasn't mine now I just don't have a job and just nothing so <laughs> so like I'm like fuck and it's like basically like kind of falling flat on your face and um yeah then I one day I walked into a job at Marathon and then I went to the gym with my friend Marathon the, yeah Marathon Grill okay yeah, I went there and I got I started being a busser, and mm-hmm. then I went to the gym that same like that that week prior. And um, I remember at Eddie Alvarez, shout out to Eddie Alvarez, uh, Philadelphia Fight Sports. I went there, shout out to Kyron, shout out to Mike, all those people that taught me everything. Um, what led you to go over to the gym? 
my homie was a member there. He was he was like into like trying to start getting into boxing. Okay. Just for, for like just like weight loss purposes and like trying to just like you know be healthy. Yeah. And I went there and I I wrestled this dude. His name was I forget his name. I think it was like Oscar. And I made him tap out. And mm. they were like he had a. And they were like, like how long you been doing this? I was like today. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> he was like he was like today. <laughs> and he looked at his. His 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 it, that was he was a trainer. He's like, you got to fight this week, and he just started today. Like, you got to get your fucking mind right. Like, basically, mm-hmm. like the boy had a fight this week, and I'm like, oh shit. And he was, I was like, how much can you make on a fight? He's like, basically, members how how much tickets you sell. Mm-hmm. And he told me how how much he cared. He was like, I was like, how fast can I get a fight? And he was like, I see you tomorrow. And after that, I just went every just like I took from football, I took that right into boxing, and it was actually Muay Thai and kickboxing. But mm-hmm. I start doing that every day. Every day was Muay Thai. Every day, every single day, Muay Thai, Muay Thai, Muay Thai. And I, I happen to have really good hip flexors, so like it's kind of like abnormal the, the way I can throw a head kick. So like mm-hmm. it was like a plus. So like I throw a head kick real tight. Like you could be like this close to me, and I can kick you in the head, mm. which is like a good thing. So like, um, it was kind of a good easy transition just because I'm a very coachable person. So like it was a good transition. And, and you were very athletic. And I was athletic. So yeah. like, I mean, that was that's just like a given. I feel like you know. Most of us like are more athletic than we like like to think. Mm-hmm. I feel like that part is like the given, like because we're human, man. We can build any type of muscle that we want. It's more of the mentality of like getting out there and just fucking going back and mm-hmm. going back and going back and going back. Yeah, putting much. the work in. Yeah, putting the work in. And then I wound up on a USA team for USA versus Canada, and uh, got my first gold medal for that. That was okay. yeah, that was 2013, I think. So explain yeah. like the the whole training process and everything like that, <sighs> man. Muay Thai training is something I do not regret at all. Like, I mean, I do not want to ever, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy at all because they smack your shins with these, like, metal rods. Mm-hmm. Or, get like, strong. Or, yeah, get the shins strong. So, like, my shins, right. my cartilage and my shins are fucking, like, I will, I will, I will fold that tree in half. <laughs> <laughs> Real shit. And, uh, like, you know, the, the the run another mile. So, like, basically a lot, of, a lot of people like to be like, oh, you do karate, which is like a back slap to somebody that does, like, Muay Thai because Muay Thai is like the ultimate form of like combat. Okay. It's knees, elbows, the whole nine. And karate is like a point system kind of. Like you know I'm saying, like it's sure you can do karate, but karate is not made to harm. Muay Thai was made to the, the kick somebody. Yeah, ass. Like it's made to, to to hurt people. Like Taekwondo is not made to harm you. It's a point system if you ever watched the Olympics. Um but sure you can so use like, it to um, my bad, not to cut you off, but to cut you off. Like, so like um karate kid. Yeah. Okay, Karate Kid, like like they're doing forms of martial art, but everybody knows when it comes down to the ultimate form of martial art and all those martial arts, if they're fighting a Muay Thai fighter, my Muay Thai fighter is going to this one. It's a win every time. So okay. basically, so basically, um, somebody just got to shoot you, basically. Basically, yeah, you gonna have to shoot. Me. You <laughs> definitely gonna have to bring the blicky. <laughs> you gonna have to shoot me for sure. You gonna have to shoot me for sure. Yeah, and uh, definitely, definitely gonna have to shoot me. Um, but <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, my friends used to say that shit to me too, because I, you know, I would come back to the block after you know training or whatever, and she, you know, yeah, you know, how nice town was niggas all on the block. It's like fourteen of us and shit, yeah. and you know, it's just tough energy at all times because it's nice town, it's North Philly, and then you know, you you come up, my come up to me like, man, I ain't playing with you, milk. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> that's it. I'm not fucking with you, milk. I'm gonna shoot you. Keep yeah. your feet on the ground. So like that's 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 kind of how it was the training with like and a lot of people think like oh yeah so are you a black belt like no that's karate that's the thing that's a yeah. different thing for Muay Thai you get shorts so you could you level up in shorts so it's black shorts blue shorts red shorts is like the highest I am a red short for sure okay yeah that's thorough yeah so was funny, like how what was that first fight like my first on my first fight I was actually I was hot I ain't hold you I was mad so like I really I really didn't pro I didn't really process my actual fighting abilities until like maybe like my third fight. But my first fight, I was mad. So like, it I just beat the shit out of this dude. Like it was, <laughs> cause like they changed they one thousand. Shout out to Steve Herb. They they cheated my homie Steve Herb. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And I we was in the back hot, and then they switched, cause it was like it was an event. I'm not even gonna say the name of the the, the promoter, but it was mm-hmm. an event at the uh, Valley Forge Casino, and it was their event. Okay. So they started moving people around, and like I was supposed to fight at 155, and then next thing I you know, I'm fighting a 164 person. Cause they moved some shit around and everything, and it was just like, is that really? legal? No, no. The fuck? But it was their event, so like, I mean, we, and we was there. Okay. And it, it's like it, it's like you know when you when you want to bench press and you fucking touch your chest and you technically you're not supposed to do that. I'm here now, like that's basically I'm here. We gotta fight, like. 
Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I know it's some grown man shit to be like, I'm not fighting somebody out of my weight class because this is not what I signed up for. Mm-hmm. It's my first fight. I'm here. I don't cut weight. Let's fucking fight. <laughs> okay. Give me, give me the bigger guy. I don't give a shit. And uh, I beat the shit out of. Uh, I ain't gonna say his name. <laughs> I beat the shit out of him, and um, it was it was crazy because I was just angry. So like, I really didn't even like get to use my but like I used my abilities, but it was just all anger. Yeah. So like, it wasn't. It was what it was. What it was. So like, do you enjoy fighting? Yeah, I do, I do enjoy fighting because it's a chess. It's a like when you fight somebody good, it's a chess match. You know what I'm saying? Like like how with like a uh, Kaleno and a uh, um, Triple G is fighting each other. Mm-hmm. Like it's not really about pain. It's more about the chess piece, the chess move. That's why you, when they fight each other, they usually you'll never see one of them knock each other out. It's more about like chess. Oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. That's when it becomes like kind of like Taekwondo, like a point system. Like, oh, I got you. Oh, I got you. Oh, good shit. Okay, you know. But you know, them fights when people are not of the same caliber, then that could be a bad job because I've been in in those. Shout out to Zach Kelly. That was one of the craziest fights I've ever had in my life. Mm. He put you down. No, you know, he, he. I never dropped. I did get a standing eight count. I was out on my feet. Um, that was the my that was probably the best fight I ever had. Um, he was like twenty seven and like two or something like that. This was my third fight. I had just came off a knockout though in like fifteen seconds. So they're like, "Oh, you want to fight for the belt?" I'm like, oh, "Fuck it, who I'm fighting?" They're like, "Yeah, Zach Kelly." And at the first time, at the first, we was already following each other and shit. <laughs> he unfollowed me. I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> he unfollowed me before they told me who my opponent was. So I'm so like, he already knew. I was like, oh, because like it was their it was their promotion. Like you mean like where where, they, where I guess where they usually are gonna fight out of, mm-hmm. and um, and then he's like, yeah, you're fighting Zach Kelly, and I was like, damn, I was just following boy. I can't even look at his page no more. And yeah, he was like legit. Like he was already up there like in the rankings and shit. Shout out to him. He actually got a fight coming up in the in a couple months. I mean a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, I fought him for the championship at like 155, and it was four rounds, bro. We that they call that the Rock in Austin. Rock and Austin fight Literally like people Who on Facebook Really put That was Still to this day One of the top Amateur fights That they've ever seen You gotta be comparing it To Rock and Austin shit. That shit was crazy bro We was in that We was I, Bro I, I might have Flew knee that motherfucker Like four times <laughs> Flying <laughs> Flying knee Right in the stomach Boom He came back All all, all hand work And then he come I mean he caught, he caught me With a smooth ass head kick And that's what That would knock me Knock me out standing up Is there a way We can see this fight yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it's not on YouTube, but like, I'm, I think I still have it on my phone. Okay. Yeah, yeah I could, I could definitely send it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, he kicked me in my head, and I got knocked out. And the only reason I walked back up is because I hit the ropes, because I was out like this. Mm. I hit the ropes, and the ropes rolled me back up, and I, I see the dude in front of me giving me a standing eight count. I'm like, fuck. So I got a standing eight count there, and then um, we kind of just pretty much locked ass. But like, you know, he he was he was way more experienced than I was, so mm. he was catching leg kicks that I was getting, you know. It was definitely one of the bras of all time. I wonder if that's still one of his best fights of all time. Shout out to Zach Kelly. Yeah. Um, so I, I asked you, did you enjoy fighting? Because I know, like, you hear, sometimes you hear the stories where people just, they do it as a backup plan or they do it for, like, the pay. But that's not yeah. that's not your story, right? Like, no. I mean, it became my story when I was transferred into boxing. And for a lot of people don't know, I actually transferred into boxing. And that, that that's where everything went left. Because I still would have probably been doing Muay Thai. Okay. But. So what happened was, and um, there's no shade to anybody, it's just like they tried to fast track me into boxing. So Muay Thai and boxing is two totally different things. Mm-hmm. Like It's like cricket and baseball. Like, sure, you're hitting the ball with a fucking piece of wood, but it's two totally different fucking things. Right. Um, and the transition, I was not ready for the transition. I should have sat, I should have sat on the shat. I should have sat <laughs> on the shelf for a full year of yeah. boxing training and boxing sparring before – I just got into a, my first pro fight because sure I was tough like I didn't do like horrible or whatever like but I just would rather have known the craft of boxing compared to you know the craft of Muay Thai because Muay Thai is like stand in front of you like don't move I'm going like it's mm-hmm. it's my strength versus yours sure you can be crafty with it but like and in boxing this everything's kind of off the line so it's like more movement mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying and um I was not ready for that at all so like I ended up like kind of fucking my career up because they tried to like fast track me and because it was a money it's a money grab you know yeah. what I'm saying? like my first fight was fourteen hundred dollars you know what i'm saying okay and it was only four four rounds damn so like you know the curtain jerk is the motherfuckers that you don't see you know when the main before the main event get there i was only fighting four round fights and i was getting fourteen dollars for it but like they seen it because you know my manager get a part of that so yeah. they just seen it as a money grab i was tough i feel like that's how it was i feel like i should have sat on the shelf for for longer but I, I do appreciate what I learned from the sport for sure, because 
I, I lost that that man heat energy when you enter a room and it's more it's men in the room and you got to feel like you tough or whatever mm-hmm. XYZ. Every man has it. It's just a weird feeling that we get. I don't know why. But that shit disappeared once I learned how to fight. Like, I can protect myself. I know what I'm capable of, bro. Yeah. Like, I was saying Taylor Swift in your face, bro. Because I was <laughs> knock your fucking block off. But, like, I'm, I'm not, you know, no good fighter is ever, like, has animosity like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. All right. So how long was you doing Muay Thai before you started boxing? I was doing Muay Thai for, like, six years. Five or six years. And then... I just literally got into boxing, and like my first pro fight was like three months after that. Oh hell yeah! yeah that's awesome. why. That's yeah. why. Yeah. Wow. It was that a was bad job. Fast. Way bad. Way bad. Bad job. And it was like, sure, like I'm tough, and I can, I understand the punches and shit. But like, and I was with a really good trainer, and like I had a really good sparring partner. Like, I'm to a boots level sparring partner. Shout out to boots, um, Elijah Vons, and I'm sure he knows Elijah Vons. Shout out to Elijah Vons. Um, they was like, I wouldn't say neck and neck, but like they sparred before, and apparently Boots got a little bit over the edge, but. Elijah Vons was a fucking dog, and I was sparring him every day, getting tuned the fuck up, like tuned. Mm. But like, I mean, I learned a lot, way more. So like, I was like, kind of on the fast track. So somebody that was like just starting out, I probably could have whipped their ass. You know what I'm saying? But mm. um, it was definitely more like components that I should have learned before I definitely dove into that like professional realm. Okay. But I mean, it was still good though. So like, um, we stopped the the boxing. Management really It was like Like I'm getting forced Into these fights And It's just like I'm not really feeling it You know what I'm saying Like when it was When it was Muay Thai And mm. kickboxing It was like It was more like Senchai And like You know Learning the art And shit And when it was boxing It was like more like Let's get like, to it yes, Let's get to it You're on your own rock Like kind of thing And it was like Yo like you gotta give me a second And like You know my trainer Was old school Shout out to him And like you know Shout out to Rev um, and he was old, but he was old school, and I was just at the time it wasn't clicking right. And then I got a con- I got I got a concussion, like a bad jaw, mm-hmm. to the point where so I couldn't hear for like out of my left ear. I couldn't hear my left ear for like three weeks. Damn, like I'm talking like just in one ear, Shit. three weeks straight. And I'm just like, yo, I don't think I'm ever. I don't, like it's like when, it's like when you tear your ACL. Like when you tear your ACL, I tore my MCL. Actually, on my first fight, I tore my MCL. Before my first fight, and I still fall on it. When you tell your MCL, bro, you it feels like it's never going to heal until it actually heal. Like I'm talking, like you like like three days, and then like, oh shit, my leg is like kind of yeah. Like, that's how my ligament was. Yeah, like that shit hurt at the same amount until it actually yeah. healed. And that's yeah. the same way how it felt with my this concussion. I'm like, I'm gonna be like this for the rest of my life. I was terrified. I ain't gonna hold you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn. And then it finally just went away. Like one day I woke up, I'm like, yeah, this this ain't it right here. I'm gonna have to find something else to do. So that's what, that was like the final. Yeah, like well, the, the losing the hair, the Aaron part, and mm-hmm. then like you know just coming back to the gym, and it's like you don't even like I'm telling you what just happened to me, and mm-hmm. you want me to spar like to today? Keep going. <laughs> like I think we should just go back, to, you know, take the drawing board back, and it's just like, you know what? I'm gonna keep training, and I'm a, I'm gonna find something else to do. Uh, you know, I didn't even say I'm gonna find something else to do. I was just like I'm gonna keep training, and you know. I don't even know how the fuck the camera found me, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I think I, I think I need I got it what I needed from the sport. Like I said, I just lost the, that that macho manness of every yeah. man, you know that. You know, yeah. So did did you actually like ever like lose the love for it? Or you just knew it was like no, it was done. I never lost the love for it because okay. I, I never like, even when I watch boxing now, I got I, I can see like because it's like I feel like it's more of like a competition thing, and like I you know I'm a winner at heart. I just want to win, mm-hmm. and that chess match is like. You love oh, it Chef's kiss man yeah. That chef's match is Beautiful That's why I like I do like sparring Like you know Especially when it comes to Muay Thai mm-hmm. Because it's a chess match For sure Okay Yeah Alright so after Muay Thai And boxing What was like The, the next thing for you uh, I don't really think I had anything set up After that I was just like Just training And then I remember like One random day I recorded this video In my car About like Uber drivers because I fucking hated when the Uber was like always talking and, shit. <laughs> and I just was like hey, man, shut the fuck up. I just recorded that video and I put it out and that shit got hits I think that shit did a million on Facebook oh shit this is back on Facebook and I'm just like alright cool like I didn't really take it like serious and like start making more videos I was just like alright cool and then I start like thinking oh maybe I can like do this beer thing like I was just, like getting random beers at like the foodery and like I would drink them and like act like stone cold and like rate them mm-hmm. and I was doing that for a minute. And like, I'm like, all right, this is kind of cool. Like, you know, like I'm getting a little bit of a buzz and like people are like ask me to try their beers and shit. Where did the liking for a beer come from? Where did the like, Stone Cold. 
Okay, this pro- okay. Like and for beer came from one thousand percent Stone Cold because I didn't get to appreciate it when I was a kid because obviously I can't drink beers as a kid. Mm. And then like I don't know where and how WWE came kind of like back into my life, but it did. And like Stone Cold was like I feel like it's one of those situations where though me growing up, my mom wasn't she didn't have you know at you know most shit. So mm. we I never went to like a WWE match. I never got like the belts or like the shirts and shit like yeah. that. And I feel like. Me now, well, me then, or like with the last five years, it's like you know my childhood shit was like pouring out, being able to like yeah. actually do it, and I think that was like a part of that. Like I can actually like be black stone cold. That was like my thing or whatever. Okay. And then um, I uh, I did another video at <laughs> at the at, at another restaurant, whereas I just like said some like restaurant lingo, and that shit went crazy. I think that shit did like two million on Facebook, mm. and then. After that, I'm like, oh, this is it. This is what I'm doing. You found your niche. I was like, I found my niche. Like, I'm just going. And like, you know, I, y'all went to school. With me, I always yeah. been a dickhead. Like, the funny uh, nigga. Like, <laughs> I always been a dickhead. Always been a class clown yeah. or whatever and shit. Like, in my head, I was like, something's clicking. Like, I'm doing this better than because uh, there was a lot of people trying to take that route. And like, I mm-hmm. was, I might drop a video and have or maybe a video, and I was doing way better than them. I'm like, hmm. So I just kept doing it and just kept staying consistent, kept doing it, kept doing it. And then, like, it was kind of getting dry because I was only doing, like, restaurant shit. Like, mm-hmm. the way I said it was getting dry, but, like, it was like, all right, we kind of get the idea. But I also didn't want to be that one guy dude. Like, oh, he does restaurant shit. Like, I wanted to be able to do because I, like, I want to venture every lane. Yeah. And then I remember this dude. Shout out to uh, shout out to Rich. He used to play uh, in the NBA. Shout out to Rich. We worked together at Devin. He was like, yo, man, I like your videos, but I feel like you're not, like, being yourself. Like, you should, like, use your own personality. That's when dickhead came to when I had to start. This. <laughs> That's when I just start being me. Cause like on K, like on them Jones, I was like trying to be like I'm working in a restaurant, but I also being funny. Yeah. So I was using like you know regular talk, like you know, but still being funny. And then when he said use your personality, I did a, another video, and I, but I was just being me. Like man, I'm not getting that shit, dickhead. Like fuck out of here, you know X Y Z. And that shit was like wildfire. Yeah. And then after that, then the North Philly bullshit came in, and then. Mm. It was at the of the, the ball start rolling. And the funny, funny, funny part is North Bowl is basically all my homies from Nice Town because like I was the first yeah. person. I was the first person like that worked with like a diverse amount of people. Like in, in when I went to Marathon, so you know I'd be around white bitches, all this type of shit. And my friend, I would try to bring my friends from the hood to night to downtown and shit. It just didn't and they favorite line be like, how, "How you talk to white bitches? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? What you say to the white bitches? And white don't got a turkey." So like. <laughs> All that North Bowl shit is like all my friends from Nice Town that didn't really get to branch out and like just would talk to me. So it's like me, I'm actually being me in the video, and then you got North Bowl being like one of my random friends. Yeah. So it was just like a crazy Joan. Yeah, and then the video start going crazy, and then Meek Meek reposted the Joan when I went to the bank, and then they really, that was that was a year ago. Yeah. And then after that, it was it's to the moon now. Like it ain't no turning. And back. now you like got the football video. Yeah, I got the fifth. The football video start coming. I know the the voiceovers. Yo, crazy. the fucking voiceovers, bro. Be having me fucking <laughs> crying. The voiceovers, like the front. Of, the first time I, the voiceover shit came about was when I don't know if you saw the, the touchdown with AJ Brown, but he pointed at the two Steelers ball. He got the touchdown. He pointed at him and he pointed yeah. at another one. I'm like, yo, if he is not saying dickhead, <laughs> dickhead, <laughs> I don't know what he's saying because. <laughs> That's why I did the video. I did the first yeah. one, and then it was funny because I was doing uh, under the fly John fly shit when I was interviewing mm-hmm. people outside the stadium. I thought of that idea too. I wanted to do so much more with that. Like I think I might circle back around with that when I like have some like money to back it because there's so much shit I wanted to do for that, and it would have been crazy. But like I got a job and shit, I can't do. I'm trying to edit twenty minutes worth of film and mm-hmm. like get it down to. It's a fucking process. If anybody yeah. know what the fuck I'm talking, I'm editing the whole shit. Like I'm a one man team. Like production, editing the whole nine yeah. voice. I can tell you this, bro. Like us, like us doing a podcast thing. Yeah, I'm starting to realize the importance of a team. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like doing it by yourself is. I just hired my first video yeah. for like maybe like the, at the beginning of the season. So like I don't have to even hold the camera. That's the like amazing part. Yeah, and then like the editing that, but yeah, the team part. Sh- yeah. You realize how important that shit that is. That shit is in a portent for sure, for sure. You need and you need like a good team around you too, like somebody that kind of they're like I got shout shout out to Khalil. He he's my videographer, but this this man only know videography. Like mm. he like yo, uh, the Eagles playing in Dallas. Like what time you want me to get to the game? The game started at like four. I'm like, you gotta leave your house at like twelve. He like the game don't start till four. I'm like, bro, you don't understand. This is Eagles versus Cowboys in in, yeah, in yeah. Philly. Like, yeah. You're not gonna be able to drive anywhere. He's like, I don't get it. And then he get down there. He's like, what the fuck <laughs> is this? I'm like, yeah. yeah. That's why I just love it because he's just like, I'm just here to record, man. Like I have no idea what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that shit is dope, man. And now it's 
it's up, man. I'm I'm I'm, I'm like ten grand ten grand followers in a week at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's, but, it's crazy. That's what's up, bro. For first, finally hit my first hundred k. I always want to hit hundred k on something. I finally hit that shit on TikTok. <laughs> so explain the TikTok grind. So the TikTok got the algorithm. So like that that's how they get your name out there. Like it gets your name out there. So is it is there like is there there is a difference between TikTok and Instagram? It's a I'm not not really. Like the difference is the algorithm. Like so what's going to reach to the people that like you that would want to see that content. That whereas though with Instagram because you got pictures of bad bitches. Mhm. They gonna swallow up at pause. They gonna <laughs> they gonna swallow up any content you put out because a bad bitch with a turkey mm-hmm. is more valuable on Instagram than a nigga that just edited, producted a whole funny ass video that's kind of complex and got Easter eggs in it. Yeah. That shit ain't going. Man, they don't. I want they double tapping that. They don't want to see that shit. Yeah. So it don't get that much push when it comes to TikTok. You have to make a video. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So sure, you still get the bad bitches that do lip syncs, but like ain't none of my shit li- lip syncs. Like I don't do no. Li- all my shit's all original. You yeah. know what I'm saying so. Um. The difference is definitely TikTok gets you, get your shit out there, and then you use the TikTok from it getting out there, and that your Instagram gonna be popping after that. I mean, TikTok pay the less, Instagram definitely pay the most, but they definitely do more with the algorithm. They just nutty with all the fucking violations, bro. I get fucking TikTok. Fucked. Yo, I get a violation every other fucking day over nut shit. Yeah, yeah, man, they be on some nut ass shit. And they don't really the violations. They don't. That's the crazy part. Don't none of don't neither one of the apps tell you exactly what you said. Like if they told if they told you, fuck if you if you told us exactly what the fuck we said, <laughs> then maybe we can make the app better. It just to say, it would just be a, like the most vague shit ever. Like yeah, you violated the the uh, the community guidelines. Uh, press appeal or delete the video. And what am I appealing? Like I don't know. Like. Like I have no idea. Like and I found out. Like enough. Okay, the first couple of drones I kind of draw. I had a gun on there. Didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't like I was like showing off. Like hey, I'm gonna shoot somebody. It was like you know the North Pole goes to World War Three video. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah, I, yeah I was, the North Pole was in World War Three. He gotta have a gun. He's in World War Three. It's like his whole thing is like I got the blicky. So like you know that was like the whole thing. But I didn't know that's what I was getting banned for because they was putting that wide, that wide ass like yeah. range of whatever the fuck. So I'm like, what the fuck am I keep getting banned for this video for? Because I kept re-uploading it and I kept getting it taken down. Like, what the fuck I was bleeping out The customers and everything mm. And it was the gun I'm like alright cool And then sometimes They might Because it's automated So sometimes they might Hear something And it might sound Like a curse word And they might just Take it off Like it's It's really weird Like and then The higher your count is Your view count is The more that they Look into your videos For like little shit Like you say the N word If you only got 500 followers You say the N word Nigga your shit Gonna be Gucci My If I drop If I even say mm, Is See ya Audio strip yeah, I noticed like on TikTok, like they got the ninja emoji in place of yeah. nigga. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, it's like that shit is nutty, bro. Like they they really be like thinking like people talk like that. Like people don't talk like that, yo. Like let that shit. Like that's why the only <laughs> only place to really be safe with your ninja. content is YouTube. It's the Wild Wild West. I know they chopping down on that now. They chopping down on that yeah, shit too. Yeah, they not. They like certain curse words you cannot say on that drum. That the, shit uh, is nutty, man. We need to create an app where we could be a fucking dickhead. Matter of fact, I just think <laughs> I came up with the app. Dickhead. Dickhead. App. Ass? <laughs> DH app. Fucking go in there and just wild the fuck out. Like, we ain't talking like wild out like back in the day when you, you look at a Mexican motherfucker cut a bitch head off and shit. Like, not that, but like, <laughs> be able to talk your shit. Like, yeah. That should be nutty. Yeah, they try to make everything like super kid friendly. Nah, I'm not, I don't. I don't really resonate with this participation trophy world. Like world now, like it's no participation trophies, bro. Like you, you, you want to be a participation trophy motherfucker? You gonna be an NPC? You want to keep winning fucking participation trophies? You gonna be this motherfucker out there that's walking in the stores looking up at shit? Oh, they got fucking this today. No, <laughs> fuck that. Stop giving out participation trophies. <laughs> be, be a fucking winner. Go fucking win. Yeah. And then uh, also be a loser. Like, learn how to fucking lose. Yeah. You got these fucking punk ass kids don't know how to lose. That's why niggas get shot today. You'll, you can't take no L. Take man. your fucking L like a fucking man. Right. Like, like, that shit is nutty. That, that, like, take that shit out. Win is win, lose is lose sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you win. And sometimes when to lose, you just gotta, it's ups and downs, bro. It's part it's of life. Hard. Yeah, it's a part of life. Like, that's why I be getting mad when they be like, Unsportsmanlike conduct when the, like when the motherfucker did the 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 snow angel next to Nick Foles' body. Yeah. So, oh, he was hurt. Nigga, we playing football. The fuck? Of course he <laughs> hurt. Real. Real. The fuck is you talking That's about? That's what he signed up for. Should have yeah, sport. Yeah. He hurt. What the fuck? I'm celebrating. You, y'all let me sack him, dickhead. The fuck? <laughs> like, sure. No, I'm not saying go around and hurt him. I purposely want to hurt him. 
But yeah, he hurt. The it's fuck? football at the end of the day. Yeah. It's football. This is this is what you signed up for, from, bro. From little league to the NFL. Yeah. Exactly. Like the, literally, this is what you signed up for, and you like they, they talking about oh the hits and the X Y Z. Like okay, let's talk about boxing. Yeah. Is there any punches that you can't throw? No. Is they, have they ever changed the punches that you can't throw? No. Because you can't play this shit. It's fucking boxing. You knew what you signed up for. Mm. You, but he hit him in his face when he wasn't looking. What is boxing? There's no such thing. You're supposed to be looking. You're supposed to be. It's football. It's the, the same shit. yourself at all times. It's the same shit. It's football. Sure, you could try to make the game as safe as possible, but you took the whole intimidation factor out when you took away being able to hit a defenseless receiver. There's no such thing as defenses. You on a football field. Yeah, that's right. Now, I can see if you targeted his head on purpose, yeah, then you're drawn. But hitting somebody, making him do a car, it's, it's really the optic and the graphic of it. That's why they, you know, he, he get mopped up. He go to sleep now. Everybody, oh, turn the fucking cameras off. This is football. Nigga go to sleep in boxing. They, that the camera on him, like, <laughs> why he's snoring. <laughs> they zooming in on him and shit. There's fucking family in the fucking crowd crying. Like, yeah. Come on now, like it's it's football. This is what we signed up for. I know it's a fucked up game, but this is what we signed up for. So there's like there's definitely like things you don't agree with as far as like the the concussion protocols and stuff like that. No, I agree with the concussion protocol. Like I definitely save them as much as possible. And I, my thing is, it should not be a flag for it. Like, we're not doing this on purpose. Like, like I mean, sure, there's far and few between. There's probably some motherfuckers out there that's trying to do that on purpose, but mm-hmm. like we not out here trying to like kill. Like you know what I'm saying, we out here trying to. Make a play and yeah. intimidation was a big part of my my like I ain't going for the pickoff. I'm gonna take your fucking head off so you know never to come across this bitch ever again. Yeah, fuck that. So I feel like the and then the unsportsmanlike calls like when motherfuckers score and then motherfuckers celebrate. Bro. Oh, unsportsmanlike kind. Why? Who? Who? What? What you mean? Why, why y'all let him in the end zone? Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> how you gonna be mad? What you? How you gonna be mad because you let him in the end zone? Fuck that! I, you you could you should be able to bust out a whole bring it on cheer in that bitch after you fucking score. Slime mm-hmm. time live the whole fucking team. Fuck it. You let them in the end zone. Fucking get on your grit and fucking go play some defense. Don't try to fight now after they done score. Fight with before they get to the fucking end zone. Bro, mm-hmm. it's a it's a competitive sport. Like yeah, but I mean people egos be hurt. Sport. Yeah, like people egos gonna, be hurt, man. People, if you tough, you're going to talk your shit. Like, if I'm tough, I'm going to talk my shit. You tripping. Just like AJ, bro, what he did. Dickhead and dickhead, right? Right. Yeah. What are you talking about? People egos be hurt, bro. Like, take a person like that. Shout out to Russell Westbrook. But, like, he he be tri- sometimes he, he be snapping on. Like, let, let's just say, like, you at a game and you Russell Westbrook and somebody talking shit to you on the opposite team. You, what the fuck, bro? Like, you can't be like, moving, get him out the, the stands. Like, mm. But you need that energy, though. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm just saying, I just don't like that. Right? That's what that's what I'm saying. Where the ego come in at with some people, like you know what I'm saying, not to say Russ. I just know that it's been situations where he like talking shit to the to the fans and shit. Mm-hmm. And I get it because it come from a man standpoint. Because you wouldn't be saying this to me if I wasn't on this court. I get that part. Mm-hmm. But you are on the court, <laughs> so you gonna have to eat that, bro. You are gonna have to eat that and play and play good defense, go, nigga. Go score and smile in his fucking face. Like I just don't like the whole LeBron move him out the. Move him out. He was talking shit about my son or whatever. I mean, which is kind of it's fucked up, yeah. Because you wouldn't do that if you saw me. But like, yeah, they gonna try to say the most fucked up shit. Like, yes, they going. This is what you signed up for, bro. I don't know. That's just me. Man, yeah, you make a point. That's just me. Like, if I'm out there, you talking shit to me. All right, well, wait till next play. Wait till next play. I'm a I'm a I'm a lion man to fuck up. I get cranium. I'm a lion <laughs> man. Wait, I'm getting on the kickoff, coach. Why? Because this man was talking shit. He ain't in the game right now. So I'm a lion man to fuck up, and I'm a point at him, and I'm point at you. What are we talking about? So, what you think? Like, what's the future for you know the NFL? Because uh, I don't, I don't see, this. This seems like every year they take less and less contact away from it. Bro, it's yeah, it's Man, can't change so much. It's football. I mean, it's football, but it, they definitely going. Like, the, the helmets are going to keep getting better. Unless somehow. they switch this shit to flag football, bro, it's, it's going to be. Football. And that's I mean, never. That, that's what the that's what the Pro Bowl is now. Yeah, so but the Pro Bowl, like nobody watches it. Nobody. Exactly. I mean, that's why nobody watches it. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, I don't think the I don't think the event, the game will ever like fully change to the point where though they're not tackling each other. They definitely, I think the the the, the technology of the equipment that we use will definitely continue to change um, right, to the yeah, point. Yeah, they, they're gonna the, the, it's gonna get better to the point where as though when you when you contact, it's not gonna feel remotely even the same compared to what, like you know we used to have shock pads. Now they got shock pads in the fucking. In the fucking show, yeah. and shit like you know what I'm saying, like, and then you know the new new age helmets, like that shit not rattling and shit. But I, I'm sure they'll come out with more new technology. But I don't think they'll ever change it to like not being able to tackle or whatever. We used to play with like no pad in the helmets for, for 
No, real shit. I, yo, yeah. I, I, I was just thinking. I remember niggas like, taking bro. the pants out the helmet. Bro, you know how many shirts I got? Bro, you said what? Stinger, stinger, bro. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like I. No, I, I was just talking about this the other day. Well, I was talking to myself because I'm a weirdo. But <laughs> I was thinking in my head, I was like, yo, I feel like I never really had a, 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 a helmet that fit me correctly. That joint was definitely like. It was. It ne- I feel like I never had a helmet fit me like 1,000 minutes correctly because it's like my shit used to always like get hit and rattle or like move. Like, right, like in the NFL, it's not like that. They, they should be stuck. And they don't even be having a chin strap on. That should be stuck on their jaw. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, my shit always was like kind of loose and like, why the fuck did I get so many stingers? Like, I feel like that shit don't happen. Sp- explain the stingers to people that don't understand. So a stinger is basically like you like you ever jam your finger. It's like kind of like you jammed your whole shoulder and it go numb. Like, yeah. It, 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 you think your shoulder just was out, like dislocated. It go numb for like, like forty seconds. For, it, it feel like you ever get a uh, fuck hit your funny bone. It feel like that, but like uh, like like a tense, like, like yeah. way yeah. more tense. Yeah. It feel like it, honestly, it feel like your arm doing this. Like, yeah, but it, your arm is just like just there. sitting there, <laughs> and you sitting there for a good like five minutes, and you can't move your arm. And then after like maybe like two minutes, you realize that oh, it's a stinger because you're starting to get finger feeling back in your fingers, and. Like I'm just in my head, like why did I get so many of those? Like I don't get, like what the fuck was the point of that? Yeah, I had a few. I definitely had a few. I had a shit ton of stuff. I was like, I don't. Was my shoulder pads not fitting right? Yo, if you know what the fuck was going on there, bro, you watch this. Let me know. Shitty shoulder pads was ass, right? Bro, I had all all our equipment was 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 bottom tier, bro. I had shock pads on, bro, and that shit. I would still sometimes get stingers. Like I, I I have, I have no idea what the fuck that was about. You ever had a concussion in high school? Me. Yeah. Of course, nigga. Yeah, you know, I had Bartram maybe, game. Me and I had maybe two. Me and Mike both went to the hospital yeah. together. The Bartram game. Bruh. I got a. I got a concussion. Of the, maybe the second play of the game, number four or forty. I mean, he cleaned me. <laughs> it was a thirty-two <laughs> ISO hole. Was bigger than straight hands get. I'm coming through that <laughs> jump. <laughs> I'm coming through that jump. He cleaned me the fuck. I stopped too. Like I did the worst thing ever. Like I came. I came through the hole and I was just like, damn, this hole big as shit. Kind of like I kind of like. Pulled up a little bit. That shit shit. Blah! <laughs> I said, damn, I had a concussion the whole game. I could, I, first, I, they probably didn't take me out until like the third quarter. My first joint was at practice. We was doing um, we was doing brick wall. Oh, yeah. that's Who was you going against? <laughs> Tameric. Oh, yeah. That sounded about right. Tameric. Tameric was a dog. No, he was a dog. Tameric yeah. was a dog. For sure. He was the smallest. He was the smallest old lineman, but he yeah. probably was the strongest yeah, you one. Put to, yeah, you put Tameric and Yanni, and Yanni is in the NFL right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no offense sure. to Yanni, but he, he would agree. Yeah. <laughs> the fucked up part, I ain't even say nothing because you remember in high school, bro. You you had like you wanted you wanted to get out. And everybody was talking shit about you, bitch ass nigga. Get yeah. the fuck out of yeah. here. So I just felt like I just. Shouldn't have said nah, I'm, I'm thinking back on it now I probably definitely Should have no, said something No definitely Definitely should have said something I also Like brick wall is crazy Like if you really think about it Like sure it's, It Bro, is football But like each other. On, So for those who don't know Brick wall is Brick walls right You take the entire team And you put them in two lines There's one person At the one end of the line And there's another person At the other end of the line They both run around Each line And meet in the middle And they hit in the middle And that's what brick wall was So how It was like football a, you can't change football. You can't change football. What I'm what I'm saying is, yeah, that that I, I just feel like that's why they made the Oklahoma drill. Like the brick wall shouldn't be a thing. I think it should be the Oklahoma drill because there's no way in the hell I don't give a fuck what plane you want in football that somebody is gonna run. You're both gonna run into each other at full speed. That's never gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. He's gonna juke you out of your sneaks. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yo, I just saw a girls do a brick wall on Facebook. <laughs> it was two shorties, two girls. <laughs> yo, that shit was crazy. She ran a bitch over. Right. <laughs> that shit crazy. Yo, this like, bitch, yo, she really ran her over. Like it was a big jump. It was, it was uh, they was on the beach. I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that yeah, was that crazy. That shit is crazy. Like, like when you when you think about the Oklahoma drill, you usually coming off a block. Or like if you're running the ball, you coming off a block, or you kind of adjusting your speed. And then, like, that's a real-life tackle. Like, that's how football happened. Yeah. Like, it, it, there's nobody just – I mean, it happens, like, you know, people run into each other. I was about other. to say, it's a few people get ran over, bro. Yeah, I mean, it's a few people, but it, this, it's always coming off a block or, like, that happens some some time to time. You definitely see it happen. Like, you know, my, Mike Allstock coming through the hole, you coming through the hole. <laughs> yeah. So, you're getting flat. Brick, I mean, Oklahoma is um, two offensive linemen, two defensive linemen. Yeah. Laying down. A linebacker. Yeah, sometimes laying down. It's a linebacker and it's a running back. Yeah. And once the whistle blow – you gotta make a play. Yeah, and that, that that's like a 
eight to ten yard gap compared yeah. to brick wall being an eight to ten yard full speed gap. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying, with nobody in front of you but the two people. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no adjustment in speed or anything. Yeah, it is football, sure. Go ahead and blast each other, but like that's just not realistic football because that's gonna happen far I mean, I get it. It's like the the separate the the dogs from the not dogs are really you just injuring your dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not, yeah, looking back on a lot of the shit we was doing was unnecessary. Yeah, like the <laughs> brick wall and man in the middle and yeah, shit. Like, yeah, it's like just, man in the middle, that's that's just like trying to separate dogs from men. And I get it. I get it. You got to separate the dogs, but you're just injuring your dogs. Like I feel like we all knew who the dogs was without all that shit. We yeah. could have just had it. Sure. We could have did the you know the smaller sets of those. I feel like if we were to practice more of the technical shit than like us being men, we would have we would build more dogs. Like I feel like if you know how to do it, it would be easier than you just cowering and having to go blast this motherfucker that's way bigger than you with X Y Z. I'm sorry to bring this up. Remember when Billy smashed ball? Yeah, he broke his jaw. How many times right. did Billy do that? <laughs> Murdered ball. Billy did that so many times, and I know Billy. Like that I was in Brick Wall, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but Billy was always one of them. Though he was always, yeah, one of them. Billy was one of them. He could, he could have definitely took it to the next level. Sure, for sure, he was always yeah. one of them. And he was, he, he reminded me of like a, like a Cam Chancellor type person, or like a, like a show and tell. Like he coming down, his yeah. shit coming down, torpedo. Yeah, he, he Bob of, Sanders type. He was the king of the yeah. torpedo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout but that was like a, a lot of reason I didn't like. I didn't care about practice. I just, I, it felt crazy to me. Like. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like the drills, I feel like the. I mean, shout out to Zip and we he did all he could. But like I'm saying, like I just feel like that drill is something that we you just don't need. Like the the, the corner drill when you like like this and you got to tackle on the corner, like you know, find the back the back shoulder so he don't juke you out the sneaks. Mm -hmm. You need that. Like you you need that. The fucking the uh, Oklahoma, you need that. Like little. Uh, the little drones we used to do inside, in between the hash with the lime and the, yeah, well, you need that, but mm -hmm. like, cause it's like real game shit, but like, all that other extra shit, we really ain't need that. Like, the running the end of reels up and down the fucking, like, man, you know who you got on your team. Yeah. You know who you got on your team. <laughs> like, you know who on your team, man. Yeah, all that shit is unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, how was me and AJ Brown? What was that like? That was crazy, man. Um, so he, he mentioned me on, online and shit. This is before I even, like, before that, cause he just, he liked one of my TikToks and then he followed me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, that's dope. And then he like commented on it. He was like, uh, I forgot what he said. He said something. Then I did the whole picture drawing when it was like the during the holidays. It was like everybody job during the holidays closed. And then I just put his face, my job, and then I put his face as in like he opened. He was like, know that. And he wrote it like, know that <laughs> on it. And he was like, tell a friend to tell a friend. And then he followed me. And I'm like, all right, shit, cool. And then I had this idea like, damn. Cause I was just thinking about the uh, as I did the I'm open John. I was just thinking about Chad Chad Johnson Chad Osinko. Shout out to Chad. Shout out to Chad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he used to call the opposing team's head office and yeah. just say I'm open and then hang up the phone. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> I'm thinking of that the whole time. Like how can I make this? Like how can I flip it and then like do it this way? And I'm like, all right, boom. I'm gonna get him an open uh, an uh, open sign. But because he had, he already had one. He got one. He got he got an open sign from Jason Kelsey. He had he already had one. But he had the regular one that said "open" on the front and "close" on the back. So I'm like, I'm getting one that he could wear as a chain, but it's gonna say "open" on both sides. <laughs> but like, I had no confidence in being able to actually get it to him because like I was like, how the fuck am I gonna get him this present? You know what I'm right. saying? Like, yeah. that's what I see. so I get down to the game early, but the, it wasn't early enough. It was like they already had the equipment on. So like at that point, like you you really locked in. Like it's not you're not about to be running up to like unless it's your mom or your wife or something. You're not about to be running up to the stands to grab a gift. So I'm like, all right, cool. I fucked up the first drone. Cool. I'm gonna try to see it. I'll get it the second one. Mm -hmm. And then after that, in between the midst of the first one and the second one, he mentioned me. He goes, yeah, it's this comedian here in Philly. You know, he be saying I'm open. I'm open. You know, and I think he's funny. So I hope he keep going. Because, you know, everybody like it or whatever, X, Y, Z. I'm like, all right, cool. Bet he know who I am. My phone going crazy, X, Y, Z. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'm definitely, this happening. Like, he getting a gift this time. So I go in there early, get in, a, in the clubhouse. I was chilling with Brett Selleck and shit. And he was like, I know you from somewhere. I was like, yeah, I do the, uh, the Eagles TikToks and shit like that. He was like, I think that's it. And I was like, yeah, we also used to drink together at Ladder <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Shout out to Brett Selleck. He used to come to Ladder and drink like a normal person. That shit was dope. Me he stay him. there? Huh? He stay in Philly? I don't know where he stay. Okay. He oh he go to every home game though, so he oh, probably, okay. he'd probably be somewhere probably near. Close. But yeah, I remember him. Him, uh, Jason Kelsey, and Riley Cooper used to go to um, ladder fifteen all the time. We would get fucked up. Anyway, um, so 
I go down with the with the gift. I'm like putting the gift together because you know you can't go in there with a box. It's like yeah. You're not getting in there. So I had it as a cardboard box, and I just put his name on it. That way, it looked like it's just a sign. Yeah. Then I put formed the box together when I got inside, and I put the <laughs> shit in there and shit. And then I was like, damn, I had no tape, so I just kind of like kind of like you know you fold a box and like make it like stay still and shit. And then. I went down and he wasn't out there yet. I'm like, damn, I don't know if he's coming out there. I also went to shout out to Hattie. He played for the Giants. He, uh, he's also from Philly. I went down to talk shit to Hattie. He didn't hear me. Um, we're going to cook y'all today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I went down there to talk to AJ and I seen him. He come out and shit. And I'm like, oh shit, there you go right there. And in my head, I'm like telling this lady next to me, that's my cousin. I'm like, I got a gift for him for Christmas. Mm. So they really believe in it now because, like, one, how the fuck you get a gift in here? Right. And two, she was a white lady. She like, yeah, you black, he black, yeah, bright cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's wild. so he run off to the side and shit. And I go around to the other side. I'm like, he definitely gonna get it. I'm like, yo, I, I'm just looking. I'm just, you know, you're trying to wheel somebody to look at you and shit. You just staring. Yeah. <laughs> he finally fucking turned around and look, and he fucking had the biggest smile. He's cheesy, like, yo X Y Z. I'm like, here, what's up, bro? I got this gift for you X Y Z. And it had his name on the front. So he like, yo, and he, he like ran over and shit like. You know, laughing and shit. I'm like, this is my cousin. I gave him the gift and shit. Mm-hmm. And he opened that joint and shit and said, I'm open. And like, it got it from like a couple people got it from like a couple different angles. So mm-hmm. it was like, it was dope as shit. Okay. And, uh, and I was like, yo, that's my cousin. Yo, that's my cousin, XYZ. So when mm-hmm. I went up to the clubhouse, they really thought I was his cousin. Like, they was dead ass, like, damn, like, how long, <laughs> like, you know, like, like, how's it been, like, being his cousin and shit? I was like, in my head, I'm like, damn, it. like, I hope this shit don't go crazy. And like, he really think I'm his cousin. <laughs> like, I was just joking. Yeah. Oh man, that shit was dope. Man, that shit was dope. Hopefully, I'm probably I'm probably try to rap with him today if I still if I get on the field. Um, that's supposed to happen today, so I probably try to rap with him, and get a pick, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know y'all get out here soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a yeah, I got a I got a podcast with the uh, federal shout out to federal donuts at, at four. Okay, shout out to Seattle Ice T, the Island Boys. I got to do something with them too. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, moves. Yeah, we making moves. Uh, any last remarks? Huh? Any last remarks? Uh. Stay tuned, motherfuckers. <laughs> Stay tuned, dickhead. Like I said last time. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me get my camera. Out. <laughs> Cause yeah, y'all motherfuckers think. Stay tuned, motherfuckers. Y'all motherfuckers think I'm playing. I'm coming for all that shit. Every. <laughs> you gonna see me on that box that you watch every night for sure. I guarantee you. You can't stop me. You can't put a son on Malik Joe. I'm the man, and I believe that. And you should believe it too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, Let's go, dickhead. Fuck, you talking about? <laughs> uh, so I appreciate you coming through, bro. Of course, bro. Man, I'm super proud of you, man. I'm, su- man. I'm super proud of your success and everything you got going on. Hell yeah, man. I, yeah, shit, you too, man. Like, Thank I don't, you. give yourself some. Give, uh, give, give yourself real. a bomb. Give yourself a bomb. I <laughs> <laughs> man, I man, you so over here getting it done, bro. <laughs> Appreciate you got you, a whole bro. podcast going on up here. Yes, sir. And it's and it's official, man. You got the mics right. and shit going out there. I, I thought it was gonna be mad ratchet up this joint. I thought it was roaches <laughs> running around and shit. It's like, no. <laughs> this motherfucker got the street fighter going. We got white people in the back. This shit is crazy. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. <laughs> you got oh, the cameras shit. going and shit. You, a, you official, brother. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you having me, man. Mm. Uh, me, me and my dogs put the work in, bro. Yeah, yeah man. Hell yeah. Hopefully I can come back. Yeah, yeah the, bro, sure. the mic is always open, bro. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, anything, any last words, Ren? No, nah, man. Thank y'all for having me. Y'all lit. Appreciate you. Y'all. I, I appreciate sure, you. Yeah. I appreciate you for slide, bro. I know. Yeah. I, told my, I told my dog he had it coming. You know? I know you was going to be here, so. Yeah, my guy. I wish we had some drinks so we get fucked up, but we don't. It's cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got some beer in the refrigerator. Oh, oh yeah. Well, nah, I'm going to face one before we leave. <laughs> <laughs> any last uh, remarks, Money? Uh, no. It was a good job. Yeah. Good job. I appreciate y'all uh, hearing my story, man. That was dope. Yeah. Uh Eagle score. What you got? Me? Yeah. Uh 27, 27 14 Eagles. Okay. At halftime it'll be 10-10 though. All right. Yeah, I don't know how nice. we're gonna get to 27. I can't really add that well, but yeah, yeah it's gonna happen. All right, you heard it here first, man. Shout out to uh shout out to Sandbox, shout out to Man Man, speedy recovery for you, bro. Prayers shout up to you. That, man. Oh, and once again, man. appreciate you, y'all niggas coming through, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Love y'all niggas. Yeah, you yeah. too, big dog. All right, we out, I man. Like Sandbox. I don't know why I did that. I don't even this like you. Like that.